Okay, guys, welcome to the SSAS and MDX training sessions, um, class two, right? Um, so if you see, I opened the Visual Studio. Yesterday in last session, we discussed about the data source and uh, some key things like uh, services. And uh, uh, we also discussed about impersonation, which is very important to set the right impersonation for your data source connections. And how can you import it from the parent impersonation properties and so on. We may revisit it again uh, once we deploy the cubes and all to our server, but uh, let's continue our discussion from where we stopped yesterday. So if you open your Visual Studio, you can see all your recent projects. So this is a shortcut or you can go to file, you can file, go to recent files or recent projects or solutions and go and select the solution file so that you can open the recent uh, project or the project that you recently worked on. I prefer this. Let it load. And this is where we stop. We stop at the beautiful star schema. So what is schema? It's, it's basically the set of tables and how it is related. If the tables are related in the form of a star, or if you see the on, on my screen, it's uh, it looks like a star. So we call it a star schema. And uh, similarly, if, we, if, if it looks like a non-star or a snowflake, then we call it a snowflake schema. Before jumping into the star schemas and snowflake schema, and um, uh, to, before discussing more about the schemas, let's discuss about uh, an important term, dimension, and another term is uh, fact table. What is the dimension table and what is the fact table? This is very important when you talk about the schema. So when you dis when you want to decide which schema you want, you have to go with for your analysis service project. So uh, what I remember, uh, what I keep in mind is when it when, or what I remember about the dimension and the fact is that dimension is a collection of attributes and fact is a collection of measures. Not the best definition, right? So when you want to analyze a business or when you want to do some analysis using your data you have to pose two questions to yourself without posting two questions or hardly you can get uh, you can analyze your business um, like for example um, let, let, let's take the business of um, bank um, which customer has highest balance so the customer is the first question and the second question is has the highest balance let's take an excel spreadsheet here and uh, try to analyze any business with single question. It will be really difficult. You can't ask like uh, sales or you can't ask like um, uh, what you call deposits. You can't ask like withdrawals. What, what withdrawals? January month withdrawals or what sales? Particular product sales. Or if you say, uh, if, if any, any, ex any senior ex manager comes to you and asks like, can you give me the sales? Then the next question will be what sales? Can you be more specific? So if you take any business, you'll be asking questions like this to understand the business better, to analyze the business better. A uh, couple of, uh, so there are two parts of, uh, two parts or two questions you have to ask to get some proper answer. If, I, if, if we're talking about cricket, okay, let's say um, India versus Sri Lanka match happened yesterday and uh, we're talking about that. If I ask a question, what's the score? It's only one question, but you can get the answer. But, but in fact, the second question is already answered because we're talking about the match India versus Sri Lanka. If you're not talking about the match India versus Sri Lanka, then the question would be, what's the score uh, of the batting team for the match India versus Sri Lanka or something else. So with single question, it's very difficult to understand the business. Uh, shall we go for some examples like uh, uh, customer sales? This is the first question answer. Who is the customer? I'm the customer. What's the sales? Let's say $10. Which month? Another question. Jan. Which year? 2018. So you can ask at least, you need to ask at least two questions and it can be more than that. More than two. For example, 
uh, what's the sales of the customer rupees for the month of Jan and year 2018? So the, the person who is asking you the question has given three answers and expecting one answer for, based on all the attributes, all the attributes that he has given. So if you, if you take these kind of scenarios or let's say um, batsman, score, let's say 200 not out, match, XYZ match. So when you ask a question, when, when you have to ask two questions, one part of it is the dimension. Another part of it is the measures or the fact tables. This is what we are going to discuss now. So what is dimension? The dimension, uh, what is fact first? Fact is the matrix that you are interested in, that you are looking for. Like for example, in the first case, sales is my metric. Uh, a blind mark, all the integers or all the numbers, most of the cases it will be matrix, like 70% of the cases. Or some number which talks about your business growth or fall or whatever, or some number which talks about the KPIs. Right. So all those are metrics. Facts are nothing but metrics. In your question, if you're looking for some metric information or you, if you're looking for some um, numeric say, information like sales or anything like that, then we call it as a fact data or measure. So measures or facts are nothing but metrics. In this case, the sales is the metric. And in this case, the score is the metric. And another piece of it in which dimension you want to see by what or in short any textual information by which you want to see the metric information is called your dimensions like here customer is the textual information and customer is the uh, i want to see the sales by customer here i want to see the sales for month of jan i want to see the sales for the month for the year of 2018 so all these things will form your dimension by which you want to see the data, how you want to see the data, what data you want to see and how you want to see the data or by which dimensionality you want to see the data. So what data is nothing but your metrics and how or by which is nothing but your dimensions. If you go back to your, uh, go back to the star schema here, if you see a few columns here, let's say for example, quantity. Quantity is a metric. What is the quantity? How much quantity for a, of a particular product or sold? So this is a metric. And how you want to see this metric? You want to see this metric by salesperson. You want to see this per, uh, metric by customer. You want to see this per, metric by color of the product or uh, let's say stock item. Or you want to see this product, where this product was sold, in which city, which country and so on, and on which date. So all these things will form, will, will become your dimensions. If you take uh, MS Paint, and uh, I'm not that good in drawing. I think this is cube, <laughs> though it doesn't look like that. So now, this is one dimension of it, of the cube. This is one dimension of the cube. This is one dimension of the cube. This is one dimension of the cube. All those dimensions will intersect at one point that is called the triple or the metric that you're looking for. Let's say this is 2008, 18. This is customer, rupee. This is month, Jan. And uh, let's say this is city, uh, New Jersey, or state, New Jersey. So all these will intersect at one point. That is the metric that you're looking for. So that that is the metric in data that gives or that helps in analyzing your business. So in this case, here, this is a, this will form your dimension table, and this is your dimension table. This is your dimension dimension as well. This one has also a dimension table, and the sales will become your fact table because it holds all the metrics that you are interested in, that you want to analyze your business. So, you know what is metric now. You know what is uh, an attribute, or attribute is nothing but what is the member. Okay. Uh, what 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 is the what you call um, by which you want to see? For example, customer is the case. So collection of attributes will form your dimension. 
Similarly, collection of metrics will form your fact table. Okay, so this fact table and this dimension table will be related. If you have multiple dimension tables, this will be related. And if the relationship looks like star, then we call it a star schema. Okay, now let me quickly give you the hierarchy. On top, you will have fact table and the dimension table. Under fact table, you will have measures. Under dimension table, you will have attributes. Attribute means any textual column by which you want to see the data. Under measures, you will have the metric data like counts and so on. Under attributes, for each attribute, there will be some members. So what is member here? Customer is an attribute and Rupesh is the member of the attribute. And uh, VA can be member of the attribute. Praveen can be member, is a member of the attribute. So all, oops, one second. Sorry, I missed the touch, okay. So now Rupesh and VA and maybe Praveen on uh, maybe X and Y are all the members of the attributes. Okay, this is the for, this is the definition if you go by analysis services. In short and in easiest manner, if you want to remember what is the fact table and what is the dimension table and what is measures and what is uh, attributes, the transaction table in your data warehouse is your fact table. The master table in your data warehouse is your dimension table or the master table in most of the cases acts as your dimension table because master table will have your information about the entity or about the business. If I take an employee, for example, you are working for a firm called XYZ and you will make, people will maintain an employee table. Employee will have all the employee information. So that is your dimension table. It has all the attributes that company can use to analyze when he is taken leave, when a particular employee, he, how much uh, salary is paid to a particular employee and so on. Similarly, if you take the same business, the leaves is a transaction table. How many leaves he has taken? How many leaves a particular employee is taken, right? Similarly, how many, um, how much, how many times he got his salary? How many months he worked from which day to which uh, day he worked all this information will be maintained in your fact or transaction information or when he swiped the card to come in and when he swiped the card to exit all this information will be in your in, in the transaction table and such transaction table is called metrics that metrics will give you the kpis for your business whereas the attributes will give you or will talk about what the person is or what the business is or what the entity is if you take any entity the dimension table is what it talk, what, what uh, it talks about so now let me take one example how we do dimensional modeling okay that is key if you if you can understand how we can, how we do the dimensional modeling then you can easily understand what is the dimension table and the fact table let's say i create a simple table here um employee name department and let's say designation and um, join date join date and exit date will be only one year. he'll not be joining and again and again right um exit date and um, leave from leave to number of days and um, is approved or status i better call it a status if you see if, if you see all these columns uh it is generally how we get the data before we move or uh, before we do uh, move the data into the data warehousing this is normally in operational database structures okay so how they get the data they insert the data in the same way now let's say let's say for example employee is myself and uh, department is uh, IT designation is uh, um, associate 
and join date is 1 1 2010 and the exit date is not it i'm still working with the firm and leave from i want to, i want to take leave from 1 5 2018 to 1 6 2018 number of days is uh, two days or one day two days and state oops this cannot be date number with no decimals okay two days and status is approved so this is one entry one entry in your operational database this is how the data will be maintained in your operational database now what if i take one more leave the same data will be copied like rupesh it associate he joined on so and so date but the leave date is from let's say 15 to 16 of uh, 2018 and again two days and again approve so if i repeat the same or this is for one employee and i can take let's say for example 20 leaves and 20 entries will be there and similarly if the company is having 200,000 records i'm oh, sorry 200,000 employees then how many entries will be there in the in in, in this big table um, in in this one single table so the data will be redundant if you see all this data is redundant it is repeated of no uh, and it is of no use rupesh name will remain rupesh only it will not be changed to something else for if i take leave on 6th of jan and if i take leave on uh, 7th of feb this is the master data the master data will remain the same or it cannot be doing like it, it cannot be tracked or it it's not required to be tracked in your transactions while while you're capturing your transactions so the best way to avoid it is to split this table into two to split this information into two one is your master table and one is your demo, uh, fact table fact table talks about the transactions that is made by you and uh, the dimension table talks about all the key uh, about the person or about the business or about the entity as we discussed now let's say this table is split into two all this uh, one two three four five columns can remain in one table and these three columns are pushed into another one i split this this is table a and this is table b now can you see any problem here there are two problems i see the first one is why we need to have the duplicate data right we don't need the second in second entry because it's it's redundant it not it's not going to help and when i join when i have two entries here and then when i join with my transaction table it will become double always or if i have 10 entries it will become 10 times into 10 times so we don't need duplicate that's why the master table always comes with the primary key because it doesn't support duplicates and doesn't require to, to maintain the duplicate data of any any entity entity now this is the first problem first problem is solved and the table will be very small let's say out of 200 the calculation was like this 200000 employees into uh, a, let's say an employee has an uh, average of 20 entries so this will be the total records in your table now it will be only 200,000 records only. We, we will not have these 4 million records. We will have only 200,000 because we split the textual information or the master data from the transaction data into a separate table. And we call these kind of uh, these, these tables are as, as our dimension tables, our master table or parent table. All are one and the same. Now, the transactions will be maintained in another table we call it as fact table where it will have all the fact information like how many days is my fact that gives me some information about the business or we, we call it as um, transaction table or we call it as chain table okay now can you see any problem here with these two? Oh my bad uh, <laughs> we should not have this uh, I missed this. We should not have this leave from here. This should go into the transaction. I missed that. Sorry. It's a nice catch. So now, if you see, 
we have all the employee information we have the sleeves information but who is the person that has taken this leave there is no relationship between these two okay so one way to bring the relationship is to maintain one of the columns that is unique or that is distinct from this table to this table for example let's say employee name is unique i can bring employee name and rupesh will be entered here so now when we join these two tables we can join by employee name and rupesh will be joined with these two and these three these two records will come in the output that's a nice idea but the problem is the employee name the same rupesh can be there for 10 people or 100 people so what people what we go with is the primary key uh, generally a numeric identifier a primary key or business key we call it as business key which represents the business key. so if you see employee key or employee id which should be always unique you can't get you uh, i mean two guys can't get the same employee id or two customers can't get the same bank account two customers can't get the same uh, credit card number right so the same way this will be always unique in your master table so the unique column is called your primary key in your master table let's say my employee id is one instead of maintaining the name here if i can maintain my employee id it will be easy for the joining and it will be easy uh, and, and for sure it will not be repeated the way we did when we define the uh, uh, our database we'll make sure that this will be unique always if you get duplicates into this this fails the data warehousing concepts this column should be or whatever the column you pick as the unique identifier for the complete row when i say unique identifier this value will decide okay this is unique one means rupesh it associate 1120 2, sorry 2010 second employee let's say babu into department admin department and uh, let's say vp and he started on 1 2 2017 and when you say 2 or when you talk okay this is the employee id 2 that means it's babu you can have 10 babus 10 10 guys with the same name let's say in it department associate 1 3 um 1999 very old guy but the id is 3 here if you see the names can be unique but they'll have a unique identifier so while taking the leaves the id will be taken and it will be placed here so babu who works in the IT, I, uh, sorry admin department as a vp is taking this leave now if we have the same employee i mean em multiple employees with the same name that's not going to cause any problem so this should give you some idea what is transaction table and what is your master table when you say when you talk about master table or if anyone says parent table or if anyone says dimension table it's all one same the one which holds the uh, textual information or the information about um, the business and now if you if you talk about the fact table transaction table or chain table it will have metrics the metrics that drives your business like for example in this case it's a number of days or number of days is the key thing here in the metrics now this is a simple example this is leaves no one will take that many leaves but what if what if company is tracking your swiping uh, i mean swiping card uh, whenever you swipe your in and swipe out right so there will be lots of times every employee will swipe in the morning and then come out for the coffee and then go in for the work and then come out for lunch and then go in for the uh, the work and then come out for snacks again and go in and then come out for a quick walk in the evening this is most common in india and go in to check out or log out and come out so per day there'll be at least 10 entries like that if, if they have to maintain two uh, two years of data you can imagine how much it's gonna be in your transaction table so if you can split this all the redundant data will be removed and push and you can if you can maintain in your maintain a master table for your 
uh, employee information in the case. This suits for any business. Let's take customer. Customer information will be only one record in any of the bank that you go. But the transactions will be thousands for each customer. So they try to keep the transaction table as narrow as possible. They don't want to maintain the redundant data. If anything that is going to repeat, like for example, approved and uh, uh, this is a textual information, even this one can be pushed into something else. They can push into a different table and uh, status ID can be given one for approved, two rejected and three um, pending. So now instead of giving a status here, a textual field which may take worker of 16 or worker of uh, 20, they can go for status ID and it will be one, one, one. This is how from the transaction data from one complete set of business, you can derive your dimension tables. In most of the data warehousing projects, what you get is uh, the tables that you get are pretty bad, pretty poor in design, and there'll be no primary case, no, you, you have to dig in to find out the dimension tables. What can be your dimension? What can be your fact? Or one big table can be your uh, dimension as well as fact. So you have to split it. You have to do some uh, extract transformation and load to your data warehouse and load the data in such a way that you split the dimension table and the fact table properly that suits for your or uh, that suits to meet your requirements so this give uh, this gives you a brief idea like how you can split and there are so much to the data warehousing concepts like how you can create surrogate keys and why you have to create surrogate keys and so on those are off topic and uh, if you have if you want to know you can ping me when um on any weekends or whenever you both are both are, both are free we can sit and we can discuss about that okay now let's see a quick example let's let me go back to uh sql server management studio i'm going to create the dummiest or dumbest table this is just an example how or what the flow will be people may be using different tools like sql server integration services few guys are comfortable with stored process Few guys may use Informatica to achieve the same work that I'm going to explain you here. But uh, the concept, I'm just trying to give you an example how the keys will be. When I say here, uh, let's say one, two, three. Who will come and place it here properly? How can I place it here? How e It's easy to say, split it and give one here and give one one here because we know the data. But what in the system? At runtime, how the system will take this one, two, three, or one, 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 or what is the status and so on. Let me, this is a time taking one, but still let me show you a simple example, new database. I'm creating, it's a one day database, like one day CM. I'm gonna delete it tomorrow, that's why. And um, let me create a simple table I forgot SQL these days. Um, let's use the same one. Employee leaves. Okay. So this is the case. Uh, if users maintain the data in Excel, the data will be something like this. They'll just maintain the employee ID because they'll not have any keys here. Uh, let's say worker of uh, um, 128 and uh, department. I don't care about the size now. Um, designation. And uh, let's go for um, uh, leave from leave to and um, what is the last one? Number of days. I'll make it as integer and uh, status. 
uh, I'll take it as vector of uh, 16, for example. So let's say if I get this data, this is a small table, really small table. It has uh, employee, it, it has only hardly five columns. If the table is too small or if the table is too big, the concept remains the same. How you load the data will remain the same. Instead of six columns, I imagine it has 600 columns, the concept is the same. You are gonna follow the same process or same approach to load, to split this into the dimension tables and the fact tables. Let's quickly see that how we can, let me enter some data into this table. This is my table, edit top 200 rows, easy way to enter the data. I, I'm assuming at least, okay. Mm, I'll call it as um, IT associate uh, 11 2018 number of days is two status is approved right and uh, again Rupesh IT associate and um, can I copy this? 1-15-2018 to 1-16-2018. And the TS is 2, pending. Third one is, uh, let's say, submitted by uh, Neela, admin department and uh, VP is the designation. And let me copy the same date here and uh, here. Let's say the number of days is uh, two. He just submitted it. Rainy, IT department, VP. So let's say she is taking leaves from this date to this date, oops. And the number of days is two and uh, rejected. Okay, so now I saved it. Let's see the records in the table. This is how you get the data. If you query from your text files, I mean, if users give data in your Excel or in the notepad files and so on. So now how can we split it? How can we analyze it? What can be your dimension? How can you make it split this table into multiple dimensions or how many dimensions possible and uh, whether it has any facts or not? What can go into dimensions first thing? The first thing, the dimension, if you see these three columns are, if you remember the normal forms, first normal form, second normal form, third normal, normal form and SQL Server, these three columns are dependent. Rupesh, IT, associate are dependent on one thing. IT and associate is dependent on the employee name Rupesh. So these three are dependent. Similarly, status is an entirely different column. It has no dependency and it's, uh, it can be anything for any employee, right? So from what I see here, these three can form into one dimension table. These three are because these three are dependent. And if I go for distinct, this reduces the row count of the table very much for me. And this is a unique column. This is a separate column. Even you can separate it into a dimension or you can uh, leave it here because it's just one column, right? Now, yeah, uh, as Sharon said, the data is denormalized here. Most of the cases, if you these days, users are giving denormalized data. Okay, and we do normalized, we apply normal forms and we normalize the data. And then in cube again, we are, de are gonna denormalize it. That's funny part of it. So now let's see, how can you split the tables? The first thing, create table employee details. This can go into one, which can have employee ID, employee name and designation because these three belongs to one, right? And similarly, you can go for table leave details because these are the transaction information of each employee that is specified in the employee name or uh, in, the, in the first table. So if I go for leave details here, what columns can fall into this? Leave from leave to a number of days are related. These three are related and these three forms your uh, metric information. And 
status as it is a single column you can you can have it in your uh, fact table or the best way best approach is to push it into a different dimension table you will come to know why it's always good to not to have uh, uh, textual information in your fact tables so for that let me create another table called status leave status there will be only one field here that is status now these three tables i split the uh, one denormalized table into three three um normalized tables if you want to know you can go and read the book normal normal forms in sql server a worth reading it has a lot of information there's six or uh, seven normal forms if you apply all the normal forms on the denormalized data the data will be normalized the data will be into smaller chunks of data one of the normal form is like always the same or the dependent data should be into uh, should be pushed into one table like how we have done for the employee details here now if i if i create these tables and if i push this data into this the problem is i cannot relate the data in future like which leave belongs to which employee and what is the status of it so to maintain that to maintain that referential integrity you need to have the referential integrity we maintain a key columns here let's say in this case it's employee id i'll name it as int and it should not be null always the reason is if anyone says that there is an employee without a name or without an id people will laugh at us if i say there is a customer in my bank i don't know his customer id and i don't know his customer account he doesn't have customer account he doesn't have name he doesn't have anything that doesn't make sense right and if you have null in your employee id which you will be using to, to join with the transaction data then how you can maintain it in your transaction how can you join so that's not going to work that's why it's always uh, people make sure that the um, column that is used in relationships in the master table will be not null. so now i have an employee id here i need to have the same id in my leaves so that I can join with these two tables. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna have any key column for this. I'll just push the data and I'll show you the problem. So I'm 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 inserting, I'm creating these three tables. Now, how people push the data? First, they read the data from this table and they load all the dimensions. There is a reason for loading all the dimensions first because it has to generate the key column or business key or the unique identifier so that unique identifier in our case is the employee id and, and this unique identifier will be used in your transaction data so if i load these first what employee id i'm gonna give i cannot give any employee ID because the employee is not loaded and it's not generated for the employee rupesh or the employee neela so that is why it's always uh master data or the dimension data that will be loaded first because it has to generate the key which needs to be uh, added to your transaction table so now from this table um let me insert the records let me drop this table real quick i don't want to leave this like this so I'm giving it as an identity column with one comma one seed is one and it will be incremented one 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 one. I don't need to worry about inserting the data. The employee ID here will be auto generated. Now let me insert data into this. Insert into employee details. Select what we have in this table: employee name, employee department, department and designation. Employee name. Employee name and department and designation. So if I read this, if I try to insert the data into uh, the table, what the problem is, it will read all the data. 
So we are splitting, we are normalizing the table, the denormalized table, and we are creating a dimension table. Whenever you are trying to do that, it's always important to get the unique values to avoid the duplicate data. If you see here, one Rupesh, sorry, Rupesh IT associate and Rupesh IT associate. If I insert it as is, what will happen? Did I create it? Yes. Okay, four rows are inserted. Now, what is the problem with these four rows? Let me execute it. Select star from employee details. And if you see here, one, two, three, four, four employee IDs are created. First one is a Rupesh IT associate. Second one is again Rupesh IT associate. Now, if you want to assign a leave to the Rupesh, which ID will you take, one or two? If I take one, it's the same. There is no unique identifier. This is not a unique identifier anymore. So these two records are the same. So that is why always when you load the master table, you take the distinct values because you don't want to get the, the unique identifier is given to your master table and hence the record should be always unique. If you don't have the records unique, then there is no way that you can get this one or two into your the transaction table you understand so now uh, I'm gonna delete the table delete the data I truncated the data so while that while loading the master data people go and get the unique records from the denormalized table so you can get it by using the distinct if I execute it you see only three records are inserted now if I go and execute this table I see only three records and only one record with the name Rupesh IT and associate. The duplicate data has been removed. We don't need to maintain the duplicate data. So this is how the first step of the data warehousing is to load your dimension tables by getting the unique records uh, into your dimension tables, which will also generate or uh, we, uh, during the process, we also have to make sure to generate the unique identifier column we call it as a primary key or business key. In few cases, if, you, if you're going for a role, I mean, a slowly changing dimension, we also call it as surrogate key. Now, let's insert data into leave tables. This is tricky part. So I can get the data from here. Employee leaves, select star from employee leaves. What columns I need to insert here? Leave from. leave to and number of leaves number of days so if i go and execute it i get this information but i need to get the key what is the key who has taken this leave or whose record is this whose record is this whose record is this there is no way that to uh, with this query to find out whose record is uh, the first one or the second one or any or any particular record okay now for that we have to go for lookups. So that is the reason we first load our, load our dimension tables and then we go for the lookups. Let me show you how you can do the lookups. So let's say this is the table A. Inner join, employee details B on A dot. So my employee table and my employee details table are available now. For me, employee table, sorry, employee leaves table is coming from the source and employee details table is something that I have created here. So if I execute these two, I'm trying to get these two, three columns along with this employee ID. So the only way is to look up. So for this record to get the employee ID, go and look for Rupesh and go and look for IT and go and look for I associate. I have to check all the three because same Rupesh can be there and another guy can be there who works in the same IT department, but not associate because we are getting, we, we got only the distinct records. That's the reason we have to load only the distinct records, right? Or else the lookup will not work. Now, A dot, I'm joining these two tables now, A dot, employee name is equal to b dot employee name and a dot 
department name is equal to b dot department and a dot designation is equal to b dot designation now i join these two tables in the form of lookup this is called lookup and now i can get b dot employee id so with this combination it will return me what is the employee ID who has taken the leave and if you see here this is two which means rupesh rupesh has taken two leaves and one was by neela and one was by the other person Vaini. so this is how you have to go for lookup let's say you have a big denormalized table that is coming from your source and if it has 10 dimension table and and you can bring 10 dimensions out of it so you have to create all the 10 dimensions first and generate an id for that and then go for the lookup of all the 10 dimensions and get the keys and put it in your column uh, put it in your fact table here in this example it's only one dimension table like that it can be 10 dimension tables and each dimension table you have to i mean to get the key column or the uh, primary column or unique row identifier you have you may have to join uh, by three columns or four columns or five columns or n number of columns there is no guarantee that it depends on how your source data is in this case i have to join with these three columns to get the employee id now i got all the information that i need now let me insert into leave details select star from uh, what is the leave details order order of columns let me see that employee id is the first one so i have to pass in the same order leave from leave to a number of days now if i execute this it will take the it will take the source table or the denormalize the big table and then it will join with the dimension table that you have created and it will get the distinct ids and it will take the i'm um, sorry it will get the uh, ids from your dimension table and inserts into your leave details so now leave details is created let me execute and see how it has uh, loaded so if you see for the employee id 2 he has taken two leaves two days right now two tables are created one fact table and one dimension table as i said all the dimensions should go first the third one is what you call leave status if i enter the leave status different leave status into this there is no way that I can join this. For example, let me insert. I, I, I have not added a key column here for this, in this case. I am not generating any unique identifier. So, simply I am inserting leave status. Uh, select distinct status from employee leaves. I'm getting the distinct employee leave status and I'm inserting into this table. It inserted four records. Now, let me execute those three tables which we have created now. Uh, third one is leave status. So this is the, your transaction table. This has relationship to this table, but this transaction table is not having any relationship to your status table. So these two can be joined and create something in your cube to do some analysis pan, but this cannot be. The reason is there is no relationship between this table and to any table available. Either the leave details or to the employee detail, there should be some connection to your fact table in order to make use of the table here. But this status is like an alien it does not have any connections and if i try to join the tables here leave details i can join with um employee details on a dot employee id is equal to b dot employee id i have this both in both the places and if i join you can see the big table is coming back again the only extra is employee id which we generated for uh, denormalizing uh, sorry for normalizing the tables and the third table, if I try to join, uh, what is the third table? Um, leave status, C on A dot, what I can use to join. There is no join condition or there is no way that I can join, right? 
So that is the problem if you don't have the key columns for your dimension tables. So this is how you design. To make it a better design now, what all you need to do is, you need to drop this table and uh, have a status ID and name it as integer, as usual, not null. And uh, I prefer to go with identity column. And uh, I can create this table. And well before I load the leave details, which is my transaction table or the fact table, I need to load the leave status also, right? Like how I've done for employee details. So uh, let me load the data here. I'm inserting again. And now if you see the leave details table somewhere here, sorry, leave status table, you can see the status ID. Now you have to load your fact table. Fact table should be always at the end after loading all the relevant dimension tables. Now to load the table, first let me truncate what I have here. I truncated it, truncated it, and instead of loading just like this, oops, I think I need to have one more field here because I don't have field for a status ID. I hope you are following, guys. Initially, I have not created this just to show an example. Okay, let me create this and now the leave and at the end I need a status ID. How can I get the status ID? By joining with my leave status. Leave status I think is the table name. And on C A dot status is equal to C dot status okay now let me try to execute this select statement it is getting me the status and if I insert this into my table now the leave details has all the information all the key columns that are required to join with the dimensions that I have created in this case this is the leave details table in total when I join with the employee details it gives me employee information when I join with the leave status uh, with uh, status ID, it gives me status also. The whole table is denormalized. I mean, this query gives you the denormalized table. This is how, if you get a denormalized table, you will normalize it and you will create dimensions and the facts out of it. How big the table? It doesn't matter. It will be the same concept. This is a small table, it can be super big or sometimes you may get two fact tables out of the denormalized table that you get from source. And two fact tables can get two two dimension tables. It's all like you have to analyze the data, how the data is related. Or you can bring one big fact table and 10 dimensions out of it, or 10 dimensions surrounding it. So it's all like how the tables are related, and uh, sorry, how the data is available in the table and how you can make it into smaller entities in which all the columns are dependent on the key column or the key attribute okay so now let's go back to the star schema and snowflake schema so with the with the, with the knowledge of uh, how to create the dimensions and facts from the uh, dump that you receive from the source team or the users um, and also with the knowledge of uh, what is dimension table and what is fact table, you can easily understand what is star schema and what is snowflake schema. So the first thing, the star schema, it's all, it's all between um, fact table and the dimension table. If you have one fact table and all your dimension tables are related directly, directly means there should be an ID here and that ID here, ID here, this ID here id for this key column and id here similarly here so when the dimension tables and the fact tables are directly related then we call it as star schema 
as simple as that. Now we have created a sim uh, simple dimensional fact scenario, right? So this is a star schema because it has three tables, employee details, leave status, and leave details. This is the fact table, and this is directly related to employee details, and this table is directly related to leave status. So all the dimensions here are directly related to the fact table. So we call it as star schema. And if you have some tables where the dimension or maybe another fact here, this is fact, let's say, and this has another dimension and this has another dimension. So if you see the scenario, the fact is not directly related to all the dimensions that are available in your schema. So these kind of schemas, we call it as snowflake schema. Anything any dimension or any fact that is not directly related it can be related through some other fact table or through some other dimension table here this is a mediator or medium this is a dimension table it is a medium this fact is required to relate this data right this dimension to this fact if you want to bring some relationship you have to join with this and then join with this from here to here and then join from here to here this is not direct relation and here if you see if you want to bring this relationship between here to here then you need this let's assume you don't have this then this will be an orphan roaming here because there will be no relationship between the fact and the dimension if i don't have this table in between so these kind of schemas are called snowflake schemas similarly you call there are called i mean it, it's again a concept people will go with their own names star flake schema half star half snowflake for example if you see if you take up to here i told you this is fact this is a star schema and this is a snowflake schema if you mix this is a star flake schema it's a name it's just a name see the schema whatever the possible ways the only possible ways that i think of is dimension to fact directly related and dimension to dimension to dimension any n number can be there to fact and dimension to fact to dimension to fact so this is in between you can have fact in between you can have dimension and in between you can have nothing direct relationship or there are in some cases you may need dimension tables which are not related at all to your fact table we will see one scenario if time permits where we they, we can have the dimension table but not related at all okay so these are the possible things we have and you can you can name one schema after you if you find a different relationship or different root there is another schema type galaxy schema galaxy schema is nothing but if you have thousand tables you don't know what is what so people call it as galaxy schema or more tables that people can't understand or you can't find which one is the actual main fact table. There may be 10 main fact tables. So people call it as galaxy schema, set of stars, snowflakes, everything. So this is about the schemas in data source view. This is the starting point for uh, uh, data source view. So we will discuss about this data source view in depth uh, in next session. See you tomorrow, guys. Have a great day.